Hey, welcome back to Barry T's Garage. We've got another story with Ed. He's mixing some Chevy parts with some Ford parts, and I guess you're not supposed to do that? I don't know. He seems to not worry too much about some of those uh, branding questions. So I'll let him explain what he's got going on. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. So you have, uh, you mentioned to me that you're not too afraid to mix Ford and Chevrolet parts. That got my attention. Uh, that's, yeah, that's common. That happens? Yeah. Just whatever's available, whatever the born stroke is, and whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Like the other day, we said that we put uh, in a 302 Ford, we put Chevy Pistons in it. Right. Yeah. And the other day, I put um, three, 283, no, 265 Chevy V8 Pistons in a Model T. I did that about a year ago. Right. So the wrist pin was right and the board stroke and things like that are right. Yeah. So someone asked me once, is uh, Ed a Chevy guy? I said, well, I think Ed's an engine guy. I think I, yeah, I like them all, but I'm partial, I think without no, I'm partial a little bit to Chrysler. Oh. Yeah, I've had Chrysler almost all my whole life and went to Dodge School in, in 60 mm -hmm. for the new cars. And that brand new was a Slant 6 the aluminum transmission and the gear reduction starter. That's a big year. So I had, I still have all my uh, instruction books when I went to school then. I still have more in a, in a file cabinet. I don't, I don't throw anything away. Yeah, they might come handy sometime. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about uh, before some of these people with flathead Fords and necessarily flathead Fords, but almost reground cams. Oh. So some of our camshafts are getting expensive. And I think Escudero is quite high now, and you might get your cam reground. Oh. And you can't say reground camshafts are bad because they've been running reground camshafts forever. And when they made the new camshaft, they ground it. The same machine that ground it when it was brand new as they do right now, regrinding them. Yeah. So what's the difference? So what's the difference? Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> See, operator on it. Sometimes you don't get very much mistakes. So just like some of our camshafts we had before, uh, a couple of years ago, we were doing some V12 Lincolns and we ground the camshaft a little bit of high performance. Okay. The same people, yeah, Snyder camshafts. Snyder, okay. And he's ground several camshafts maybe for over the years and stuff. And, and so, uh, and the other day we got a flathead Ford camshaft that was reground and it's about half the price. You can get a camshaft ground for about $200 now. It's the same profile as the other one, same lift and duration. And there's a little problem with it. Not say problem, but you have to be careful with it. Okay. So I'm gonna show you what to be careful with and, and why you'd be careful with it. Today. Yeah. A little lesson here, I hope that people, uh, and even though with your other engines too, if you regrind the camshafts, um, there's, there's some reasoning in there someplace. Okay. So what we're doing today is we're gonna show you this this uh, yeah. thing here. This is a stock camshaft here. Okay. And the, we're going to grind down the base circle when you grind a camshaft. Okay. To get the lobes to go higher and the lifter to go higher and the valve to raise higher, yeah. you can't make the camshaft bigger. Uh huh. Yeah, so you, you can't can. weld on top the camshaft right. and make the lobes an inch, inch higher, right. or they wouldn't go in the hole in the engine. Sure, right. So you cut down the base circle, and that's the base circle of the camshaft, the core. Uh -huh. So if you cut the core down, yeah. if we cut the core down 90 thousandths, uh -huh. then the core would be smaller, and this lobe could be longer. Right. So the difference between the lobe lifting off the camshaft, the core, yeah. and the lobe could be whatever you want it to be, right. reasonably. Right, and we might just yeah. point out real quick, this isn't to scale, that's not 90 cents. No, uh, not, 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 not a scale at all. We're just exaggerating. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. This camshaft, when it rotates, yep. it travels across the bottom of the lift, and that's called duration. That's the valve was open all the time when the piston is still going up and down. Because again, the piston on a four cycle goes twice as fast as the valve, mm -hmm. runs twice as fast even though the camshaft. In the same way here with this and with the small camshaft, uh, original, there's the, with the lobe center, yeah. Uh -huh. Now here's a little thing here of a, a stock camshaft mm -hmm. was pointed. 
Okay. And the real point is to where there's no duration, maybe at 240. So the valve closes and it compresses the whole chamber full of air. Okay. So there you get the compression of maybe 110, 120. Yeah. Okay. Because it's compressed all the air and the valve's closed all the time here. Yeah. Uh -huh. And here's one with a, just a little thing about a roller and a, a roller camshaft. These were, I just put them under for a roller, that they roll up this side, roll across the camshaft and roll down. So a lot of times a roller camshaft is almost square. Okay. Yeah, that's how you get a roller. And you cannot put this solid lifter on a roller camshaft because it wouldn't roll up and go over the hill. Oh, yeah, you'd make yeah. something real fast. Yeah, you'd, the lifter would dig in the side here. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Somebody's in, they call your specs, specs on your cab. People a lot of times pay a lot of attention with the specs. Mm -hmm. And it says at 50 thousandths. So somebody would tell you that the duration has something. But then, so the camshaft will put a little raise right here. And a little raise down here. So that's the ramps that start this. Lifter starting up on the cam. So it raises it. Yeah. It just starts to raise it so the lifter don't dig in here. Uh -huh. If it was a regular thing, the lifter would be digging in right here. It'd make a big scratch right in here in this cam when it's every time it went around. Yeah. So this raises the lifter 50 thousandths and then starts your duration. But still the same duration. Yeah. At 50 thousandths, you take the 50 thousandths, add to your specifications like 230 mm -hmm. in the book, add 50, 280. So really the camp's 280. 280, what does that mean? Where's that number? That's how long from? the valve's open while the valve, while the piston's going up and down. 280 degrees? Yeah, degrees of crankshaft revolutions. Okay. Crankshaft degrees, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so we want to make sure I got it. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So now, if we took 90 thousandths off the cam core, the lifter is going to drop all the way down to here. Right, because you've reduced the, the height of the... The height of the whole valve assembly, 90 thousandths. Yeah. So, with that, the lifter drops down 90, then goes through the valve train, and when we put Chevrolet valves in a flathead Ford, because we buy Chevrolet exhaust valves and put them in our, our flathead Fords. Uh -huh. We can buy them for about half the price of any other valve because they make so many of them. They only make a million of them. Yeah, a day. A day, yeah. <laughs> so we buy that valve. It's 90 thousandths longer than a small, than a flathead Ford valve. Okay, so you're making up the difference in length. That's exactly right. Okay. So if you would put a regrown cam mm -hmm. and a standard Chevy valve yep. that's 90 thousandths longer than a flathead valve, the lifters were just perfect wow. with the solid lifters. Wow. Oh, just a couple flats. Interesting. And if you don't do that and don't put Chevrolet lifters in it, the longer lifters, then you got the adjustable valve lifters and you have to screw the screw out if you screw this out 90 thousandths it just spins and it will not tighten right. it won't stay it won't stay tight right right so if you do that you're in a bunch of trouble right yeah and we buy these lifters from steiner tractor sales uh -huh. i buy quite a few lifters from him and they, these lifters are the same thing in a 9N Ford tractor. 9N Ford tractors had solid lifters in them way back for new end. When I was a kid, I used to buy two sets of Ford 9-inch lifters for my, ship, for my flathead Ford. And that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Yeah. But if you do that and run the short valves, you have to screw this lifter out 90 thousandths to that's get the I'm valve thinking. adjust at the 12 thousandths for lifters and and it will be too loose and it will come loose you can't
can't do anything. So it instead of doing that, you so can just you, put a different valve in. Yeah. So really, the, the rule is reground cams, shivvy valves, adjustable lifters, and you're set. Remind us the advantage of an adjustable lifter compared well, to the You don't have to. Every time that you don't do it, then to set your 12 thousandths on this lifter, you have to grind the end of the valve off or grind the seat or the valve. Back and forth, back and forth. Every valve and every guide, and you have to grind that valve for that hole because this is different and that's different. And so you take is, each valve, walk over the valve grinder, or turn valve grinder, and grind them exactly back and forth until you get 12 thousandths. That sounds very tedious. Yes, tedious and takes a long time to do it and get it correct, yeah. And other than that, you put the adjustable lifters in it and you can just hold them with a, and we drill our holes like our vet, our, our video showed, mm -hmm. and hold them, put an Allen wrench in here. Don't put a piece of wire in it because sometimes they're a little tough and, and this lifter rotating, trying to rotate, will cut the end of the wire off. Right. So we use a little Allen wrench, stick it in there and take a 7 16th and adjust it a little bit and six or 12 thousandths, you're done. Yeah. It's real simple, yeah. Get to it. So we have a couple examples on camshafts here. Yeah. And one of them is a, a flathead cam laying here. Okay. You see how pointed they are. And this would be a stock camshaft, how pointed the low wow, it low is. It's really pointed, yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Get, get right down the yeah. down the throat of it. Yeah, that is so yeah. and obvious. this camshaft happens to be a four fifty five Pontiac brand new camshaft I had laying here and you see how round that is. Yeah. It's almost completely or almost as round as a roller cam. Wow, what a difference. Yeah. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. Okay, that's great to see an example. Yeah. Well, we just this is one we bought we bought an eighty over uh -huh. and we're just gonna put it together original. Uh that's gonna we put that um a reground cam in this. Again that's perfectly fine. And uh the guy is going to downtown. He, got a, he just wants to sh a flathead for it to run on an engine stand. The other day he was in with a bunch of metal and looked at my engine stand. He's going to make one home and just put it in his garage and start it up once in a while. He said, someday he might buy a frame to put it in and, and finish it. Now, he's retired, maybe 60, 65 years old. And he's having fun. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. interesting. We're going to build a whole motor. What you just explained to us on cams, this is for just normal street cars. Yes. What happens in racing that's any different? Uh, actually, uh, with this lifter we just said with reground camshafts, which all camshafts are reground or ground with the same machine and so on. Now we have some of our camshafts, our racing camshafts, with the core small. A steel, good steel crank with a real small core about the size instead of like a, like a one inch core in a camshaft. Some of those camshafts we've seen today maybe have a one inch base circle. Okay. And our camshafts would maybe be down to a five eighths or three quarters. Huh. And that drops the lifter down on the camshaft. Yeah. And also gives us a lobe. Uh, we're gonna talk about race cars then a little bit. So we take a small block Chevrolet motor and we drill it out and put bigger cam bearings in it. Now we're putting a bigger cam bearing in it, and even some of ours has a roller bearing in it. Not in a roller, but it does have bearings, pin bearings. Cam bearings are pin bearing. So the cam runs on bearings. And then through a certain rock arm, and we can almost get 900 lift out of the valve. Yeah. Wow. And other than that, just like we said, we showed you these, if this lobe was any higher here, yep. because these cases here, the camshaft, the wrong camshaft, wouldn't even go on the block. Right, right. So if you was make a big fat lobe, it, it wouldn't, the cam wouldn't even go on the block. So you have to keep that. The only way to get base the lift with that cam, just missing the cam bearings to put it in, would be to lower the base circle and drop the lifter more. Okay. And the flathead's about the only one and I saw it by the Lincoln Flathead Motors. It's a fixed valve seat. The height between the valve, seat, and the camshaft is fixed. You can't do much with it. Right. So we're stuck. With a Chevrolet, mm -hmm. you can put any kind of head on it or any overhead motor and, and put length the longest push rods in it. Right. 
we're changing the push rods all the time. Mm -hmm. In order to special push rods, depends on what heads we put on and how long the valve stem yeah. valves are and stuff. Well, it's quite a complicated thing, and it's just not, this goes with flatheads, but it goes to all the motors and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it's really interesting. That is interesting. One more thing I forgot to ask you. On the cams you got sitting out, just for people to be able to picture it, can we show them, can we show people what a where the base circle is on a cam? Like yes. On a physical cam back here? Sure, yeah, yeah. Now the base circle is the center, uh -huh. co center core here, right here. That's that circle. Okay. So that one looks like it's about one inch, maybe a seven eighths or something. Uh huh. And then the difference between that and the lobe is the, is the lift lift. Uh -huh. So now we're going to grind this all off, the back of the thing, all the way down to the base circle. Okay, and you're going to do it on all of them the same, right? All of them the same. Okay. Intake and exhaust. Uh -huh. And we will not grind this at all, or very little right. when you regrind it. So right. this stays the height, the same height. We just lower the back and drop the bearing. Uh -huh. Drop the lifter down on the base circle. Right. Okay. So that's pretty easy. Now you can see that this Oldsmobile camshaft has got a base circle of over a quarter of an inch. Inch and a quarter. Yeah, much bigger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, inch and a quarter. Yeah. And you see their cam bearings are bigger too. Right. Bigger cam bearings, so it goes in the motor. Uh -huh. And this has very little lift. Yeah. Between the base circle and this bump on here. Yeah, very little. That's yeah, true. Yeah, very little compared to... Compared to that one, right? That flathead camshaft should have a, a lot more lift than this, but it goes through a different rocker arm ratio. Okay, yeah, and the rocker make arm up on it. makes up for it. Yes. Okay. So this lobe on this Pontiac camshaft is really the lifter don't rise very much. Mm -hmm. It goes over here and lasts forever. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it really will, and runs smooth. Yeah, so it's, it's a different camshaft, but it's a good example. Of two mm -hmm. different camshafts. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's really interesting to understand that. Yeah. Right there in person. Sometimes you don't have a, a couple camshafts this radical to explain and to, to compare. Yeah. Yeah. yeah compare yeah. what yeah. No, it's really good. That helps so much. Well, Ed, you've done a good job explaining that okay. to us. I thank hope you. everybody understands. Yeah, thank you. If you don't have call in some questions. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, we we'll have some more question and answer yeah, coming yeah. up. Yeah. Very good. And by the way, some people are wondering. How do I ask a question? All you have to do is write a comment with a question in it yeah. on the video. Is that on the, on the, on the video? Yeah, 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 just put a comment, just that. Tell, yeah, say it says I comments ask in a place for comments, isn't there? That's right. Yeah, and just ask a question there. Yeah, yeah. it's easy. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Ed. Okay, good, See you have again a good soon. day. Okay, bye. Wonderful day out. It is beautiful. Thanks again for joining us at Barry T's Garage. Thank you for subscribing and comments. Please remember to send in questions for Ed for when we do those Ask Ed interviews. It's always a lot of fun to get your questions and see what Ed has to say about what you're thinking about. So anyway, appreciate you being here with us and we'll see you on the next one.